Ben Franklin was a bright man. Guess you weren't expecting a computing or a computer organization lecture to start out with a discussion about Ben Franklin. Sounds a little bit more like a history lesson, doesn't it? Well, let me explain this because Ben Franklin, although very bright, makes a lot of starting electrical engineers and electro electronic students um, well, it makes their life a little difficult. And the reason is, is because of this weird thing called, well, current, electrical current. Back in Ben Franklin's day, or earlier, there was a, a theory about the flow of electricity being uh, this idea of a fluid flow. And so they, they already knew about something like a current, current flowing back and forth. And one of the things that was, to, one of the, 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 the ideas was that it was a two fluid theory. Um, there was one fluid that combined with another fluid and they retracted to each other and the fluids flowed through conductors in order to, you know, kind of combine with each other and null each other out. Ben Franklin believed in the one fluid theory and this idea that, that it was a, a fluid, a higher potential, you know, if you've got a, a bucket of water, water will flow downhill. And so you had this higher, uh, this higher potential, this excess of some fluid, and it flowed to counteract a deficit of fluid in the other direction. And so he picked a direction, right? He said, okay, we're flowing from here to here, positive to negative, higher potential to lower potential. What's actually flowing? Turns out electrons are flowing. It's the, the excess is actually flowing uphill. And so all of the ideas, all the principles, all the computations and so forth based around electricity are discussing current flowing downhill when actually the active thing flowing is the electron flowing up. And when you look at circuits, oftentimes we have this idea of a positive being a logic one and a negative or an absence being a logic zero. So what's actually doing the flowing here? Well, the thing with the pressure, the thing with the, the active nature is the zero that has to flow, okay? And this brings us to this idea of something called an active low circuit or output. Now, an active low output, what that means is, is that the active nature, the, the, the yes, the power, the one that's going to flow the quickest is going to be a logic zero. So the, this means that the active state is a logic zero. And the inactive, or I'm going to refer to this as the idle state, is a logic zero. One, all right, so we've got this idea of active and inactive. And, and in fact, when you think about logic ones and logic zeros, typically you think of a one as being active, true, yes, right? And the zero being the inactive or the false. Um, and, and that's not always the case. Let's talk about an AND gate. In fact, let's just go ahead and do a truth table for A, well, we don't need it on that side, have my inputs listed on the on the left side, and then A and B. We'll do a quick truth table for this guy, right? Now, what does the AND gate look like? If you remember from our discussion about the property or the, the rule, the, the algorithm that drives an AND gate, you're familiar with this idea of if all the inputs are a one, I'm gonna be a one, all right? Now, if there's a zero at any input, I'm going to output a zero. So this is the truth table for an AND gate. Turns out that there is, well, an active low version of this guy. And in fact, what we'll do is I'm going to make another column here, and this will be A and B with a bar over the top of it. And this guy, this is going to be our active low version of the AND gate. It's going to be a one anytime we're outputting a zero, and it's going to be a zero anytime we're outputting a one. Notice the bar over the top of it. And in fact, this circuit is used so much that it's got its own name. And the name includes the word AND, thankful, thankfully, because it operates like the AND gate. What they do, though, is they say, well, it's really a knotted and, right? 
Well, you say that quick enough, what do you come up with? You come up with the word NAND. So this gate right here is so common that it's actually got its own name. It's called a NAND gate. Now, think about this. What the circuit actually looks like. We've got an AND gate. And I have to be careful how I say this. Sometimes I talk a little fast, and so when I say a NAND gate, I say it really quick, and I say an AND gate, and that kind of sounds like an AND gate. Which did I say? An AND gate or an AND gate? Well, hopefully the circuits will make it, make it clear. So, this circuit right here has A and B going into an AND gate, right? and then passing through an inverter to come up with A and B bar, okay? Now, this circuit, once again, is so common that what we see oftentimes is the circuit is drawn like this. Remember I told you whenever we were first talking about logic gates that the triangle really doesn't imply the inverter. What implies the inverter? The circle. So we just put a circle at the end of an AND gate and we've got our NAND gate. All right. Now, that was pretty quick. There's one other thing, though, that I want to talk about. We talked in the last, uh, in the last um, lesson that what an AND gate can be used for is to identify unique conditions. For example, if I've got A and B, A ANDed with B, the active the active row is when A is a 1 and B is a 1, right? Yes, but what if I don't want to figure out whenever A is a 1, B is a 1? Instead, I want to say, I want to identify when A is a 1 and B is not a 1, okay? Turns out there's exactly one row for that too, exactly one condition when that's true. So let's go ahead and change this around a little bit. I'm going to change this row and thereby also my active low row. And instead, I want to say, I want to put a 1 when A is a 1 and B is a 0. Which, another way of saying that is A ended with B bar. That is going to say, as long as A is a 0, we're still going to output a 0. Because this is going to be 0 ended with something, right? As long as B is a 1, B bar is going to be a 0. So as long as B is a 1, B bar is going to be a 0, and you'll have something ordered with and, anded with 0. The only time we're going to output a 1 is the case when A is a 1 and B is not a 1. And the active low version is going to look like that. Okay. So this circuit right here is just saying that A is... that. Oh, and I need to finish up my expression there. Uh, that I want to output a 1, or I want to go active when A is a 1 and B is not a 1. All right? It's a pretty common circuit. So I can actually move this active row to whatever row I want in the AND gate just by adding or, or taking away bars, just inverters. Okay? Now, this circuit right here is actually pretty easy to draw, too. What I'll do is I'm simply going to take my NAND gate, right? And instead of running A and B through an inverter, remember the circle makes the inverter, I'm just simply for A and B bar, I run A straight in and then B goes through a circle, an inverter, before coming out. And this circuit right here is A ANDed with B bar with the output inverted. All right? So, maybe we want to figure out whether we have, you know, we have maybe four inputs. And I want to figure out the condition, maybe my four inputs are A, B, C, and D. And I want to figure out the unique condition. And this, by the way, is referred to as a decoder. I want to decode the unique condition when A is a 1, B is a 1, C is a 0, and D is a 0. All right? What does it look like? Turns out that the circuit is quite simple. X equals, first of all, we're looking for a condition that involves all four of those variables. What does A need to be? A needs to be a 1. 
What does B need to be? B needs to be a 1. What does C need to be? C needs to not be a 1. What does D need to be? D needs to not be a 1. Wow, that was a real quick way to create a logic expression, wasn't it? And what does our circuit look like? Well, the circuit is just an AND gate again, right? With A, B, C, and D as the inputs, A goes straight in, B goes straight in, C passes through an inverter before going into the input, and D passes through an inverter before going into the input, all right? What does our output look like? Well, it depends on whether we're looking at an active high or an active low circuit. If it's an active high circuit, we're done. We just need to put the output X there. If, however, we're looking at an active low circuit, put your inverter and then you're good to go.